So that's so that's um, and and you you'll find these a lot of times on this new upper growth. That is twelve spotted cucumber beetle, also known as southern corn rootworm, and. Uh, yeah. Well, in a different, pa di it, different pests have different names in different crops. Or the same pest has different names, like corn earworm is also tomato fruit worm and cotton bowl worm. You know what I mean? Because depending on what, oh, white flies. White flies like crazy. Somebody else? I mean, look. That is, that is an aphid, and I'm not sure if that aphid is getting mummified, but it looks like it's got fungus. Uh -huh. That is a, an aphid that has died. This is what I would, what I found in Kenny Haynes field. So we're going through looking all, yeah, here's another one. See, there's one that's died. That died of fungus. See that, that was an aphid and now it's flattened out like a pancake and it's a this fungus. Is that is your aphylinid, that's your parasit. No, that is um, incarsia. Right, that's, that's what's controlling the white fly. That's what's controlling the white fly, right. Yeah. So we got the white fly, but do we carry so those controls right on the same leaf? Controls the white fly? Incarsia. E-N-C-A-R-S-I-A. -E 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 -E. yeah. So like that Johnny in. Incarsia. Right. Like the late. Uh, so, People so. buy it, but we never bought it. Yeah, take a look here. Grab this there. So what happens a lot of times, if you guys think about it, because they're down, you're down here next to a creek, you're going to get kind of, you'll get other funguses that you wouldn't get if we were going up on the hill up there because this area and doing it organic, you get these big epizootics. Oh, cool. All right, we've got a, this is a small wolf spider. And this is another beneficial. We didn't talk much. Did I wear my spider t-shirt? Yes, I did. All right, so, you know, spiders are important too. Here's spiders. Might as well open up my shirt. Spiders. So, you know, it's not, I mean, of course, I'm obsessed with parasitic wasps and insects because that's what I was trained in, but I'm, so here's a, that's a wolf spider. That's a baby, that's a small wolf and, spider. And would it be preying on squash, beetle, or bug larvae? Yes, it'll, it'll prey on anything that's moving around a little bit. It has to have a little bit of activity for, for it to attack it. But you can see that's not enough. That's, that's a little bit of white fly. It's almost to the point where it's concerning me, but not really because that's a fungus that's killed that aphid and there's a fungus over, where's that other little flat? Yeah, that's an aphid. That's a dead, that's a dead fungicized aphid there. Nice! Woohoo! Oh, hey, I'll pet you. You did, you did really good. You had, yes, that is a big girl. I got to tell you guys a story. Yes, yeah, yeah, that fungus, right. That's the, that's the parasitic wasp that attacks the white fly nymphs. You know, white fly nymphs look like a little trilobite. They look like a little scale. Those parasitic wasps come up and they tap them like a watermelon. And they have to ring right. Well, they're tapping them to make sure nobody else is parasitizing. And they hit them and it rings and then boom, I've got pictures of them parasitizing. I got to tell you guys a story about this. One day I'm out scouting and these two bugs are coming to each other and one of them is a, a predaceous stink bug and the other is this exact, this is a um, one of the big nabids. I think this is Nabis americophorus, but I'm not sure. I, I don't remember right now. So these guys come up to each other, and I'm like, this guy is going to walk through that stink bug. And they start circling each other, and suddenly that stink bug sets out its proboscis into the neck of this beetle, and they sit there for about 10 or 15 seconds, and suddenly you see this, be this big beetle go, and the stink bug kills and eats this big, I didn't think, I thought this thing was invincible. That is a ground beetle. That's one of your better, this is your, this is your nighttime caterpillar manager. Well, and the stink bugs are predators of it? Well, the stink bug I'm talking about was a predaceous stink bug. So anyway, just by looking at that, you think there's nothing that could take that thing down. And here, this little tiny spindly yeah. predaceous stink bug stabs it in the necks and drinks all the fluid out of it. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. One of my favorite shots I got, I actually had to go back and get my camera when I was supposed to go to market. Squishing a few Very good predator. This is mainly a predator of caterpillars at night. So you have to be out here at night to see these. Go on ahead. Fine soldier bug had Oops, I guess I tails. Turn it down. Now, I took that picture and went to market and left calling it the potato beetle larva on that plant. By the time I got back, it cleaned up all the potato beetle larva too.
Because it's really not flushing. It doesn't care if it's a beneficial or not. You know, it's just going to take out every soft body insect around. Right. Um, but why do we have it? Because we, ha we allow the potato beetle larva populations to stay there, and then in come all the predatory bugs. They love those high populations of soft body larvae. Squash bug. <coughs> this gets attacked. Now, I tell you, when I see squash bug, I nuke it with soap. I have a little soap container thing that I keep next to my, um, some of my, uh, my cucumbers, and I nuke them, but certain ones of these, this one doesn't have it, have big white eggs on them. And those you might not want to kill because they are, a, that's a tachinid fly called uh, Trichopoda penipes, okay? And it's a really neat fly because it's red and has big fuzzy red legs. So, I mean, they're, they're, um, when you see them, you'll know, you'll know what they look like. Now, so w once again, this is one of those, this is a mandatory squish item for me see, when I'm out. We get pretty darn good control without even Yeah, what are you controlling those with? Well, we control it by controlling the um, vine borer. We spray twice a week, all summer long. What are you spraying? Soap and BT. Oh, okay. So we, Just you know, at the base? At the base. At the base, that's okay. Kinda, there are all these other methods, but that's the most cost-effective method for us for controlling vine borer. Wow. And serendipitously, the soap takes out at least the, at least the nymphs. I don't know if it gets the adults all the time, but it sure nails the nymphs. You know? And if you nail the nymphs all the time, we have low levels of the bug, but not enough to start problems. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's not even like we're trying yeah, to control those. We're just spraying yeah, regularly to control the vine same beetle, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's still, that guy's barely alive. It's just having the memories of the last caterpillar it ate before it <laughs> started to kick off. Oh, oh nice. Okay. Yeah. This is, okay. <laughs> this is one of the reasons I grow fennel. This is going to turn out to be one of your butterflies. That is going to be a swallowtail. Right. right. And the, have you guys seen the, the horns that pop out of it, the little stinky yeah. orange horns? So if you go like this and you irritate it a little bit, watch these horns come out. There they are. <laughs> and they has, it has cyanide. Smell it. It's cyanide. That's cyanide. So it's smearing. You wouldn't want it. You don't want to touch. You don't want to mess with that thing when it gets that big. Yeah, you know what you do? Yeah, right. It wants to let you know. Right. It's, it's going to get Yeah, look. Back. See, it's like, hey. Right. See? And it's trying, it's trying to hit me. Up. Right. It, you know, it's like, hey, if you're a parasitic wasp, well, I'm going to kick your butt. I'm gonna I'm gonna wipe you with cyanide, and the next thing you're not gonna you're not gonna be interested in attacking me. You're gonna be figuring out how to get this yeah, burning sensation. Worm, no, no. I found a hornworm in my tomato season yesterday. You have cocoons sticking out of it. These white that's Cochia that's Cochia congregata. That's another good beneficial. You want to keep those hornworms around. Yeah. Even though they do those are the pupae of the wasp. Like, Remember the one that I showed you in there, that broccoli stem that had all those white cocoons? That's yeah. the same thing like that, except they pop out of the, they won't attack this guy. I, I, I know. I I'm sorry, I just messed it. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's another one. This is kind of fun because, you know, when we do our farmscaping with kids and stuff too, this is a, this is a really nice benefit is when I'm driving down the road and I smash a, a swallowtail butterfly in my car, I go, well, I know I got three more for the one that I killed in my garden. You know what I mean? I'm not. At least I can I, I can know. say he, he's, yes. I think he's a goner. He was on the head of a broccoli. Or okay, this was probably broccoli that had been sprayed by BT. Oh. Uh, have you guys sprayed? Yeah, I just had him spray BT last yeah. week because I really there you go. Yet, you so what? Yourself, right? Yeah, what happened here was it ate the BT and its guts dissolved. And so the first thing that it did, probably where that was, is it'll regurgitate its gut contents. You'll see this caterpillar puke. And then they'll be hanging there like this, and then sometimes they drop off. So if I'm scouting, sometimes I don't even see this guy, but I see this big mass of puke. And I'm like, that one is, go that one is gone. So there's all, you know, this is just like tracking wildlife. If you know, if you know what to do, you're at night, you've shot a deer, you want to see where the blood is, you use a black light, and then blood glows. Okay, not that I want to do that, but I'm just telling you, there's all kinds of little, I mean, this is what happens when you hang out in fields year in and year out and try to figure out, and this is the stuff that we would have to figure out. So we would spray our stuff with BT, and we would have to wait, you've got to wait at least 24 hours for them to eat this stuff. And the thing that, that Charles had a problem with with this was he goes, I want to spray something, and I want to see those worms curling up and dropping, and I'm like, dude, this will do the same thing, just wait a couple days, you know, and I'd walk him back through the field, and we'd see him like this. 
And the other thing that we would always do when we harvest our broccoli is we'd have these big tubs of slurry water, ice that's at 34 degrees. You, you can't count past five with your hand in the water. And you put, them, you put broccoli down in there and just swish it around. If there's any pests or beneficials in there, it washes them out. So we'd have these big tubs where we're just washing everything down and wash it a few times and then pack it. You need just as much ice as you do broccoli when you're packing broccoli because you're basically making a solid block in a 20 pound box. That's, and you use flake ice, okay? So this, this brings back really good memories to me. Right okay, there. and a word about BT. You gotta get this into every, every talk, right? And now there's a great movie to give you the information about it, Genetic Roulette. We have a link to it on our website. You have to watch that movie because that BT dissolves the gut of the worm, right? It doesn't really affect us the same way. So we could eat that we could eat that leaf and we wouldn't get our guts dissolved. But the wisdom of genetic engineering, they are now have it so that if you eat corn, the BT toxin is expressed in every cell of that corn. Right. So I people are eating this is meant to, to say that even though the science may think it's out in terms of how it affects our digestion as a population right now, we have an epidemic of messed up digestion. That's where I'm going. That's where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's where I'm going. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's where I'm going. The thing yeah. is when we spray it, we spray it like a silver bullet. Okay. You know, we spray it once on the broccoli and it breaks yeah. down yeah. in a matter of hours. It's not yeah. in the cell. Mm -hmm. You know? It's not being expressed by the plant in every cell. You know? And so you're not really digesting it. It's gone by the time you get it when we spray it. It's a fine thing to use it the way we use it. Mm. It's, and except for the fact that they are making insects resistant to it by having so much of it out there. Exactly. But exactly what she was saying, now we have these epidemics of leaky gut and things like that. Mm -hmm. And this has started to happen after we did this experiment on our population. That's right. Which is BT toxin in all, everything you buy in the supermarket. I mean, if it's got if it's got corn in it, it's got BT toxin. That's right. If it's got cotton 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 seed oil, BT toxin. Mm -hmm. And we watch that movie. And, the and protein, after you watch it, the proteins don't digest, right? So then it's producing BT in your gut. Well, and they also don't know how the actual bacteria that's in our gut when that reacts bacteria, with it. The, the bacteria can actually genetically modify themselves. You're introducing organisms into your own body that then they can genetically modify right. their own genetic code in your stomach, and then you start producing populations of nobody knows what. Right. Is yep. Yeah. Yeah. And the same thing's happening with. Um, alfalfa that they've you know they've engineered alfalfa to be roundup resistant mm -hmm. and they've shown now that causes botulism in cattle that mm -hmm. gene there's something in there that causes an anaerobic effect when the cattle eat it and the cattle are getting botulism and dying so we were off topic i apologize no that's, that's not that off topic when is the one shot yes. time then when the flower flour cupping is? yeah and what does cupping. that mean it's well, it's come, it's look, it's come over here and look at those, those that are about this big that's this uh, that's okay it, it would be back it, right now, even, it would be actually a little earlier. You want it when it's a button, right? We're all right? behind okay. us here, all but right. we'll okay. probably just like a button, like a side. Like that. If you spray it now with BT, let's just say that you had a pest pressure that would justify it. You know, you're going, going for market like some of us are, where your standards have to be a little higher. If you hit this now with BT with the cool weather, I'll guarantee you it doesn't matter if imported cabbage worm butterfly comes in here and lays an egg. It ain't going to make it. And then the other thing that we would do so is we'd... Yeah, and the, and the worm, will, the worm might have gotten that big. And then the other thing, of course, is I'm going to rinse it in that tub. But we would always put everything in this tub and rinse everything through, and it's all out of there. N no, I haven't. But Yeah, yeah. Here's... Um, this is an imported cabbage worm and it's actually parasitized. Mm -hmm. So I may cut it open and you can see all these weird wasp larvae in there. He can tell that from I 15 feet. I can, this is. I've seen walk by 15 feet away and tell He's reading his aura. You know, I was, I was the outcast in grade school and high school and now I'm going to make everybody pay for it, man, because I was a geek, right? So what we do, I hate to do this and we may get good. Yeah, do you want to see this? Perform the surgery.